Welcome back, boys, and the 1.2% of my viewers who are female. I know I've been gone for a little while. I got a couple little things done. I'm still waiting on parts for the most part. But, uh, yeah, that's my little routine I have to do every day if I want to do any work in here. Fire up the old truck. Hey, check this thing out. Check this shirt out. If that doesn't scream 1997, I don't know what does. But, uh... Yeah, I got the firewall done. I'll show you that. Uh, I didn't film any of it. I didn't think it'd make a real interesting video, so I thought I'd just go over it now. So yeah, what I did here is you guys remember the massive hole. So what I did is I uh, went to the junkyard and I cut out that little section that I needed out of a Mustang and with a sawzall and just brought it back. It only cost me five bucks. So I welded that patch in. So this is all nice and sturdy and this outer Scott Rod panel had something to, you know, weld to. So that's all really tight and then the Scott Rod panel just lays over everything. And you just got a couple little tacks that I did about every, oh I don't know, six to eight inches up and down. And then the I just grind them smooth so you can't really hardly see them. And then I painted it with the paint match, and it looks it looks really sharp. But don't go worry, it's a lot safer, and it, it just looks way better. It looks better than stock because there's no freaking holes. So yeah, it's pretty pretty trick. Turned out real nice. And then let's see. Uh, I got the little 90 coupler here, which it works out perfect, like I thought it would. I am against 90 couplers. I this section here will be welded. Um, I'm a, I just take the way they look. They I'm fine with straight ones, but uh, I just don't like the way 90 ones work. But the way this worked out, it was the easiest way. I might change it with V-band clamps and stuff later, but that's a lot more work. And uh, I'm trying to make the uh, April 18th deadline to get this thing running again, so I can get it to the chassis certs. So it'll work out good for now. Like I said, it, it fits perfect. So, and it, it silicone couplers or V-band clamps or whatever, it makes no difference on power or anything. It's just like all visuals. It's actually a good idea to, uh, on the turbo side to always run a, a silicone coupler either on the turbo or on the throttle body if you have a pipe there. Because of vibrations, you can actually, if you don't have one on the turbo side or on the throttle body side, depending on if you just have one single pipe, you can actually tweak your cover just enough to where you can make your blades contact the edge. So you want some sort of play in your piping just a little bit just to eliminate any vibrations. So yeah, that's pretty much what I got done. This is just a little update video. Uh, next week, Monday, today is Saturday. I'm supposed to get my intakes in. Once we get that, we'll be rolling. So that's all I need to finish up the intercooler piping, get everything over to my buddy. Have them weld everything up and she'll be good to go because i need a, a radiator hose but other than that no big deal it's all good so yeah i'm just waiting on parts still that's kind of just a little update on the car okay quick funny story on these freaking intakes is i'm gonna have four of these freaking suckers because i'm impatient and here's a little background okay this is the original one i had the edelbrock it's a 4150 flange. You can rotate it front to back or side to side. It was too tall for what I'm doing. So then, Mr. Beaterbomb hits me up. He sells me this one. Uh, it's a Boosted Solutions Dominator, which can go, because that's a perfect square, it can go front to back or side to side. It's got a big old uh, 102 millimeter opening. Too tall because I'm going to have to have an adapter like I talked about to go do a 4150 intake. So I'm like, all right, let me just see who makes these. And no one really makes these anymore unless you're a custom fab shop. I could make one. I don't want to, have to buy materials or time. And I'm not the best aluminum welder out there. Uh, so I find out that 417 Motorsports out of St. Louis or Southern Missouri, Columbia, whatever, wherever they're from, Springfield, I can't remember. Anyways, they make them, and they make some really nice parts, if you know anything about They're real big in the LS game for intercoolers and intakes and stuff. But anyways, they make 
elbows. So they're pricey too. So I'm like, whatever, screw it. But they can make it any any type you want. You can make it 4150 flange, 4500, whatever. So I'm like, all right, I'll buy one. I buy one, and uh, because they're made to order, it won't. It says it won't ship till the end of April, beginning of March. I'm like, well, poop. That ain't gonna work out for this April 18th deadline. So I surf Facebook Marketplace and Facebook forums, and I see a guy has a 4150 elbow that's real short 90 that is used but it looks like it'll work so i buy it and the guy ships it out it's going to be here monday and uh then i get a uh i get a uh, email from 417 that says the intake has shipped already so it's going to be here monday so i'm going to have four of these freaking suckers obviously i'm going to use the 417 one because it's the nicest and i paid a lot of money for it so i'm going to have three intakes and if you guys want to hit me up in the dms if you need one i'll gladly sell them to you i'll just i'll sell them for what i paid for them uh around right around 100 bucks a pop like i said this is a 4150 this is a 4500 i'll have another sheet metal 4150 so yeah if you guys are interested you need an intake i've got uh, a lot of them so kind of a little story on that well guys, yeah, you're gonna have to bear with me. I know it's a little bit of a, just a quick update, short video. Uh, like I said, today is Saturday, come Monday, Tuesday, I'm supposed to be getting those intakes. Once we get that, things will really start to get the ball rolling and we'll get everything done and we'll get it running again. It'll be really sweet. Uh, one quick thing, I've had a lot of comments. I'm not gonna go into great detail, but I'll give you the gist, is how I'm running LS coils on here, is these are just factory LS coils of a 5.3 truck. Uh, I drilled and tapped these valve covers. They got little plastic shims underneath to keep them up off the valve cover. Got all that crap from the hardware store. The computer I run in this car is MS3 based Stinger Performance is the company. Uh, they make all plug and play uh, computers and harnesses and stuff for OBD1 Fords and maybe even some later stuff. So I have that computer. I have their harness, which is just a 93 Mustang GT harness. It's just redone with all new stuff. And then uh, because it's MS3 based, it has an expansion port on the back, which I have their expansion port harness that can run uh, LS coils. And then I run their cam sync. This, or I'm sorry, not a cam sync. This is not a cam sync. This is a cam angle sensor, CAS, a CAS. There is no crank trigger on this motor. I don't run a crank trigger. This is a cam angle sensor. So by reading the angle of the cam, it knows when it's on top dead center and knows when to fire. This is just a factory 351 Windsor distributor that has been retrofitted with a tone wheel. And all that stuff is available. It's literally, I bought everything off of stingerperformance.com. It's kind of pricey stuff, but it makes running LS coils. And if you're not super savvy with this kind of crap, it's super plug and play very user friendly. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching guys. Hit that subscribe. More to come. See you later.